My name is Anton Ertl, and uh, yes, so I'm talking about memory checking, and we go right away. What uh, memory safety? What is memory safety? Um, <clears throat> uh, we have um, memory unsafe uh, languages like Forth, which have a flat address space and inside the flat address space we have in four contiguous region in C it's called objects and um, we have addresses and the, we have typically addresses to a start of such a, an object or contiguous region and we also have addresses uh, pointing to the middle we have address arithmetic and uh, which allows us to um, to walk around within such a thing but um, we have nothing that prevents us from going outside uh, of a contiguous region or object and or even going into the next uh, object or into some private object uh, and we we could, one, the worst thing is you get the stray right uh, into some, some other data structure and uh, some arbitrary amount of time later you get um, a crash and you don't know where, uh, why, why this data structure is corrupted. So you don't want that and that's what memory safety is about. And <clears throat> I've been trying to um, to find the definition of memory safety and I have not quite found something um, um, satisfying but what I think it is about is that we don't have a flat memory space but instead each um, contiguous region each object is its own uh, is, is stands for itself uh, we have an, uh, a reference to such a contiguous region. We don't have address arithmetic, um, so we cannot go outside it. And we have some access operators that are typically bounce checked and so on, um, and um, which prevents uh, a number of errors. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, Maybe before I go into what, what it all prevents, yeah, these are the kinds of errors we don't want. Uh, so we don't want an out of bounds memory access, so go beyond these bounds. Um, we also don't want access to the wrong structure. So we, if we have here this, um, this address uh, and it's to whatever, some list we don't want to, to treat it as a tree node or something like that. Um, and we also, um, if we have uninitialized memory, we can get problems. So um, if inside this object we have um, uh, something that's used as a reference to some other object, we don't want it to, to, to get some garbage from, from something else. Uh, from from some earlier execution or something like that, we want uh, it to be initialized to some known value and best an, an invalid value and so typically we zero this um, so um, because zero is, is not a valid reference. And uh, finally, we also don't uh, an, another kind of error that we want to avoid is to use after free. So basically, <clears throat> If once upon a time we had some object at this uh, in this area here, um, and we keep a reference to that object after we have uh, freed it, um, and uh, we, then we get this new uh, object here, and we use the old um, reference um, afterwards, uh, we can also get some uh, erroneous. Um, um, pro so some problems, for example, we could uh, mistake some integer in, in the new object for a reference in the old object and um, get some uh, uh, reference to somewhere else which is actually invalid. So, <clears throat> oh, 
cannot do this. I have to do it this way. So um, what do we do programming languages do about memory safety? So we have some uh, languages that are not memory safe, like Forth or Assembler or um, C or C++. And most other languages are uh, memory safe. And that includes um, uh, languages in the Forth family, at least I consider them in the Forth family, like Factor and Oforth. Um, but also languages outside the four families, such as Java um, <clears throat> or Python. Um, and one uh, essential thing is that we have to distinguish between references and other data. And um, this is done, depending on the programming language, this is done by static type checking, for example, in Factor or in Java, or by tagging, for example, in O4 or in this, or I think in Python. <clears throat> uh, and for the four problems I listed, um, the uh, memory safe languages um, do, uh, uh, they use bound checking to prevent out of bounds accesses. Uh, to prevent accesses to the wrong structure, they use um, dynamic type checking, or static or dynamic type checking. But even, even for um, a language like Java, you uh, typically get some uh, dynamic type checking. You also get some static type checking in these, these languages. <clears throat> for uninitialized memory, as I explained to you, uh, zero everything. So when you hand out a new uh, object, you, uh, you zero it, and then when the um, program initializes uh, the object, it's, um, it's fine. Uh, and um, for use after free, you, use, you typically use garbage collection, or uh, Python uses reference counting, or um, Rust uses some uh, very um, complex type checking. Um, or you can also say very sophisticated type checking um, to um, in in combination with explicit deallocation. And so the explicit type checking ensures that there is only one reference left when you deallocate and this is then, then uh, uh, destroyed. <clears throat> so, um, what uh, is this talk about? It's about um, another way to, to do it in, in fourth. So a way different from the one that's used by Factor and the one that's used by, um, by O4. So I don't want static type checking and I don't want uh, tagging. Um, and I still want memory safety. So how do I achieve this? I, you see it in red. Um, basically, I don't put any addresses on the data stack. Um, and this means that we don't have fetch or store, and we also don't have address arithmetic. Um, and we have a, a separate object stack that contains object references, but uh, you cannot do address arithmetic on these object references. Um, and uh, you can basically do field accesses, you can do array accesses, but not, not much more. Uh, <clears throat> um, and I'm not going to discuss the object orientation of SafeWorth in this talk. You can read about it in the paper. And I also um, am limited do it in a limited way there, but um, it's also an object-oriented language. Uh, <clears throat> um, in all, because we have no fetch and store, we cannot use uh, the uh, standard for field words. So we have um, value-flavored fields. And of course, we cannot use variables. We use instead values. Uh, and uh, for array accesses, we also cannot do fetch and store, so we have this bracket open, bracket close for reading from an array. We uh, have an index and, uh, and the array. 
and we get the value at that point. And we have this store into array where we have a value and an index and the array and we store the value at that point in the array. Um, yeah, I have um, basically the rest of the talk, uh, well, uh, not a lot of the paper and the good part of this talk is about comparing what SafeWorf does uh, to what StandardWorf does. And that's uh, here what is what we do uh, for the stacks. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> uh, we have uh, the data stack is split into um, the data stack and the object stack in safe forth. Uh, in, so this is what forth 2012 does conceptually and um, down below here we see what the typical implementation does. Um, so conceptually we have a separate control flow stack in uh, forth 2012 and the typical implementation uses the data stack for the control flow stack, but um, that leads to various problems in uh, SafeForth um, because we then have some one one problem is that uh, how to deal with an exit inside a um, a counted loop um, if we have um, uh, in in uh, for 2012, we rely on the programmer doing the exact right number of unloops uh, in order to get rid of the um, uh, of the uh, loop control parameters. Uh, but um, that's uh, this reliance on the programmer uh, is not incompatible with memory safety. So in uh, SafeWorf, we don't rely on that. We don't uh, use unloop. If the programmer exits, we know exactly how many um, control flow, um, how many um, um, counted loops are on the control flow stack, and we uh, do the we insert the unloops automatically, and that's uh, how it works in in SafeWorth. Um, for the return uh, stack. Uh, we, we own in SafeWorth, we only use it for uh, stuff like return addresses, for loop control parameters, and we don't, so we only use it for the system return stack, and we don't uh, have words like 2R and R from. Um, we would need one for the data stack, one for the object stack, and we actually would need. Uh, um, uh, re a data return stack and an object return stack for that and we, we don't want to go there. I mean, you could uh, design a, a memory safe forth that does this, but it's, in my opinion, it uh, adds a lot of complexity for too little gain. So we don't go there here. <clears throat> so return stack is only there for um, uh, for for stuck, stuff like uh, return addresses and uh, loop control par parameters. Um, and finally, of course, we have the FP stack, and this is not changed between uh, 4th 2012 and safe 4th. So here we have uh, an example program. Uh, so The paper contains a lot of stuff about uh, safe forf um, and comparison with forf and so on. And I'm on, I'm skipping much of that. And if you want to know more about that, read the paper. Uh, what I'm going to present here is um, a comparison between uh, standard forf and um, safe forf. Uh, and to show up the differences. Actually, this is not really safe forth because uh, as I mentioned, uh, safe forth is an object oriented language. And um, I didn't want to introduce all the uh, difference between a uh, standard forth, which is not object oriented and an object oriented system. Uh, 
um, into this comparison. So I uh, present here something that's uh, a memory safe fourth that's uh, based on that's using structures and not objects. Um, so um, we see first of all we see that uh, we have we define so that the example is about an, a list of integers a linked list of integers we insert we have an insert operation and in the next page we see um, uh, what is it well, let's see. let's see what it is it's the dot list operation. Uh, so, and how, how these two are coded. So first of all, we have we code the, uh, the definition of the int list in standard form. Um, we uh, define two fields and we, these are variable flavored uh, fields. Uh, and of course, they are both uh, cell sized um, and uh, uh, also uh, they are relevant to the, um, um, for the for the data stack and so on. Uh, in um, in in this uh, safe fourth variant, uh, we instead use value flavored uh, fields, and therefore we use here um, value colon and O value colon. And the O value colon is for defining a, a value flavored field that pushes its um, its uh, contents onto the object stack when it's called. And if you if I do two next, it takes its uh, value from the object stack, whereas uh, this one is a, um, is, uh, a field that's, uh, uh, that takes it, that communicates with the data stack. So this one uh, points to the next, uh, uh, to the next, uh, uh, list element or next list cell and uh, th this one contains the, the actual value of the list element. <clears throat> so for inserting, um, uh, here this is the way uh, we insert at the start of the list and um, uh, in, in the fourth uh, code we are using locals here. In the fourth code, I pass the address of a, uh, of a, of a cell that contains a pointer to a list and then modify that. Um, I cannot pass such addresses um, in uh, safe fourth. That's why I uh, pass in uh, not the, the address of such a, uh, of, of such a cell, but I pass in the uh, list before and I get in the list afterwards. Um, and yeah, so what's, what's going on here? I, um, I allocate a new list element uh, and uh, get it on, on the stack. Uh, then I uh, take this list uh, pointer, store it as the next uh, and, and fetch from it and store the, uh, so now I get the rest of the list and store it in the next pointer. Uh, and I store n, this is this n, uh, I store it into the val cell. And finally, I store the, the whole thing into uh, the list uh, pointer. So uh, when I call this, I say here, I add, uh, I insert element one uh, into my list and now I, my list is changed. And then for, the, for inserting two into my list, I, uh, I can uh, 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 invoke it in the same way. Um, by contrast here, we um, take, uh, we, we get, uh, uh, a list in and get a list out and uh, then I have to, um, to to work differently. So originally I um, say that my list contains uh, uh, a null uh, value actually, yeah, but, uh, and I uh, pass the contents of my list to insert 
then uh, get another list out and then I uh, put that list. No, it shouldn't be swap. There should be nothing here because the list that comes out is uh, in the uh, on the object stack. So I can just uh, invoke insert without any swap and I get an, another list out and I store this to my list in the end. Um, <clears throat> Right, so back to how insert works. So I create a new int list with uh, new. Um, I uh, and new puts the uh, this list uh, element on the object stack uh, and uh, zeroes it. Uh, I store list one. This is this one. Uh, into uh, this uh, list. So we, here I, uh, with O over, I get um, the result of this new. And with two next, I uh, store into the next field of this uh, int list that I created here. Uh, here um, I uh, get N and we have, um, because N is on the data stack, I uh, say here O dupe instead of O over because I have uh, no new value on the on the uh, N doesn't push anything on the object stack, uh, and I use this to access uh, the val field of the um, of of this new int list. So I store N N into the uh, val field of of this int list. And um, I still have the int list on, on top of the stack, and this is our list to result. So uh, the next is I want to print the uh, want the word to print the list, um, and in both cases I just pass the list in. Uh, in this case I pass it on the on, on the object stack. In this case I pass it on the uh, on the data stack, but I don't show this on the in the um, stack effect comment. <clears throat> the differences are basically here. I can just um, check if it's null by uh, by checking uh, while it takes a value from the data stack and um, compares it to zero. So I don't have to, to do any comparison with zero uh, explicitly here. Whereas here I um, have my list one on the, um, on the uh, object stack. I have to O dupe it and compare it to null. Uh, again, here I O dupe, uh, I have another O dupe instead of the dupe. Uh, then val is a value flavored field and it gets the value of the uh, of the current element uh, on the stack and prints it whereas this is a very flavored field and therefore I have to do a fetch and uh, so similarly here I have to uh, do a next fetch because next is a variable flavored field whereas here I can just do next without the fetch and in the end, I have to um, drop uh, the list here and O drop it here. So it's very similar here. Basically, the only differences are some things I have to do on the object stack and some things I have to do on the data stack. Some things are very, very flavored and some things are value flavored. And um, yeah, here I have to uh, use my list fetch and call dot list and whereas I, I don't need to do the fetch here. <clears throat> Next um, thing is uh, I looked at, I wanted to compare how this safe fourth compares to standard fourth. How different is it uh, to get some idea how different it is and how similar it is. So I took a look at the 140 33 core words in 4th 2012 and of these 96 are unchanged because either they don't do anything on the on um, on the stack or they uh, 
do something just to something that's on the data stack in O4 uh, in uh, in safe forth and uh, uh, like uh, plus or something it's it's unchanged <clears throat> uh, 14 uh, words have adapted stack effects for example number greater um, produces not a C address U, but it produces a string, um, and that's why uh, why we have to change the stack effect. Um, two have some other small changes. Um, Twenty one are deleted, uh, for example, store and two R, um, and there are fourteen new words like null equals and O constant, and these are new words that correspond to words that exist in, in the core words. Um, there are also some non-core words that we cannot do without in, uh, in say for like value and two, uh, but I haven't counted them because it's, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure how to do an exhaustive list of them. And there are also some object sex equivalents of uh, these words, and I also haven't counted them. Like O value is an object stack equivalent of value. <clears throat> so, some more advanced topics. There's um, basically many memory safe languages have some kind of escape hatch. Uh, typically, you have a you can call into C, uh, uh, for, for example, Python uh, has a C interface or Java has a C interface. And basically this, this allows to do some things that are not possible in, in the memory safe language. Uh, and either, either are not possible or they are possible but are too slow and so if you want to eliminate the overhead or the opportunity co cost of the memory safe language you use the escape hatch <clears throat> and of course in fourth um, uh, or for, for a safe fourth uh, it's um, the escape hatch uh, would be to fourth and not to C. I mean, you can also have a C interface, but I mean, given that we already have an unsafe language, uh, we can um, we can use fourth as it as as, as the for the escape hatch. And of course, um, every time the escape, uh, the programmer uses the escape hatch, uh, the programmer is responsible for memory safety. And not just that, but there are typically also requirements beyond uh, what fourth typically needs for memory safety. Uh, for example, you have to do some special um, things in order to satisfy them, uh, the garbage collector and so on. <clears throat> uh, or if you have... Um, uh, reference counting, you have to update the reference counts, uh, things like that. And of course, if you want to process untrusted um, code, uh, you um, from say some user you really don't trust, you um, can, uh, you should be able to weld the escape hatch shut. And I mean, that's not very difficult You just remove the word for calling the escape hatch. Another advanced topic is uh, multi-threading. And here's why I, why I would like some feedback or some, uh, some of your ideas um, after the talk. Um, basically, uh, the garbage collection for a single uh, thread is not that complex. Uh, but once you add multi-threading, it becomes complex. And if you want it with decent performance, it becomes really complex. Uh, and I've, at least that's my impression of, from listening to some talks about it. And given that there are new papers uh, still, I mean, um, in, uh, I think last year I had uh, I heard a talk about it, or 
two years ago. So even in recent times, there are new papers about it. So you can see it's not as simple. And this is after um, uh, 60 years of garbage collection and at least 20 years of uh, multi-threaded garbage collection. So it's obviously not a very uh, a cut and dry topic. So uh, one alternative I thought about is um, to have a preferred garbage collector, which would also mean that I cannot allow to pass object references between threads. Uh, instead, you would have to marshal and unmarshal objects to, um, to get them from one task to another task, um, which is some overhead, but on the other hand, you avoid uh, this uh, big mess. And uh, as a, a side benefit, you can also use, um, basically once you have your program written that way, you can also uh, uh, distribute the threads between different computers because you now have actually a distributed uh, memory uh, um, uh, program. So, oh, imp about implementation efficiency, I cannot give you any numbers yet. Um, but I've, um, from the things I looked at, I thought um, we would see less um, direct overhead than I expected at first. And uh, I, I think that less direct overhead than, than probably many expect. Um, and I think the bigger problem for, for efficiency is not the implementation efficiency, but the missed opportunities. Uh, so doing some things in some, uh, some nice trick that you can do in a memory unsafe way uh, and that you cannot do in a, in a uh, memory safe language, even with, if you eliminate the direct overhead completely. Uh, I think that's that's a bigger problem. <clears throat> so in conclusion, um, memory safety um, means that references are limited to accesses within objects. Um, in SafeForth, we have no addresses. Uh, we have a separate data and object stack. And we have also separate uh, data and object values and corresponding separate data and object value flavored fields and so on. Um, the status of SafeForth is that for now it's a, it's a paper design uh, and maybe it will become a reality if there is enough interest. Um, but well, we'll see. I mean, um, in 2016, I presented a, a paper about, um, about uh, uh, security and I didn't get really much, didn't feel really much interest there. So if you think this is something interesting for you, uh, please uh, let me know. And thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Anton. And we already have the first question from the chat. It's by Rumim and he asks, why would a user uh, prefer safe force over factor or O force? That's a good question. Um, so um, I tried uh, factor and I didn't get along with its static type checking. So that's one uh, reason. Um, uh, it's, uh, uh, compared to OFORF, yeah, I actually safe for when I compared it. So I didn't compare it very well with Vector, um, but I did compare some some more with OFORF. Um, OFORF is actually in many respects very similar to um, to safe for, uh, except it uh, has it uses tagging, so uh, you. Uh, get rid of the tagging overhead if you use safe off. That's one reason to use it. Um, another is, or an, uh, another difference is um, that OFORF really embraces all of this, um, 
many of the modern uh, functional and object oriented techniques. For example, it uses a, um, a, a, an XT taking word uh, for, for basically it, it has more postscript like control structures instead of forth like control, control structures. And my idea for safe forth is to stay closer to, um, to standard forth. So have um, control structures that have a start word and maybe some middle word and um, something at the end instead of having a word that takes a, um, um, a quotation or a, a closure or something like that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bernd, please, the next question. Uh, you probably want to have a string stack two for strings because the objects are fixed size and strings are variable size and they have different requirements to, to be operated with safely. Maybe I'm at the moment I'm thinking about um, st staying with the object um, stack for strings and um, I mean, it depends on how you um, design your uh, string API. Uh, yeah, I think if, you, if you always create a new string, if you want something longer, it's, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's another question from Howard. It's, could you give some examples of the missed opportunities, please? Oh yeah, that's uh, that's a good, good one. Um, I mean, uh, the fun thing is, I, I always, uh, basically all the time I program in Forf, I, I do a lot of things that are not possible, that would not be possible in safe Forf. But now that you ask me, I don't have a really that good answer. It's like, um, I mean, I, I would have to, to look at uh, some code and, and see um, what's, what I do. Um, I mean, one possible missed opportunity is that I can, um, which, which I can, uh, what we do in, uh, in chief of, um, for, um, for dealing with uh, names is we um, um, for, for hashing is we take uh, eight uh, characters at a time or well whatever however much fits in a cell and use that for hashing and um, typically in, in a typical safe language you cannot do that um, and the way I envision safe for you will have problems doing that too. Okay, thank you. Klaus okay. had the next question. Klaus, you're still muted. Wonderful. No longer. Um, I still don't understand ETO stack. I mean, an additional stack adds is an explosion of complexity. I mean, and you trying to create something that reduces complexity by letting you, allowing you not to certain errors. On the other hand, you're driving up complexity. So I'm not very enthused about the approach. Well, uh, uh, certainly um, the whole checking and so on, if, if you consider complexity to be the implementation complexity of the fourth system, uh, the uh, complexity goes up. Um, uh, and, no, I and, mean the complexity of you have OOP and O dup and O over and and I mean these are all words that you can get wrong. Oh, certainly you can get them wrong, but um, it's uh, you. I mean, memory safe language does not pre prevent all errors. Um, it just prevents. Uh, uh, getting uh, the kind of errors I, I showed about um, at the start. Um, so if you write uh, O-tube instead of tube or tube instead of O-tube, yes, you can do that. You will um, get some funny results. 
but you won't get a stray pointer right. That's that's what you get. Um, you can, I mean, if you want uh, to stay with a, with just a data stack, you can uh, use something like OForth, which uses ju just the data stack, and then you have to, the uh, tagging overhead. Or you use something like Factor, which uh, you, which then you have the complexity of uh, uh, static type checking. Okay, thank you, Anton. Uh, Glyn has had his hand up and then down again. Did you want to ask a question? Uh, Klaus kind of covered what I was going to ask. I was just going to ask how uh, how this affected the kind of programmer's ability to reason about the program, because I can see reducing the pressure on one stack makes it easier, but on the other hand, adding a new stack can make it more complex. And I was wondering if Anton had a comment on that. Okay. Uh, so Krishna was the next one with the question, please. Yes, yeah, so I understand, I guess my understanding is that if you ticked uh, a word, something would end up on the object stack. So an XT is an address. Then is there anything to prevent you from storing at that object and corrupting the code for say an uh, indirect threaded system? Yes, so um, I um, I didn't go into uh, XTs, uh, but basically, yeah, the, the, the plan is to to um, to support XTs and XTs would be objects. And I mean, for every object, you uh, when when you do access the object, you get uh, either a dynamic check or uh, or you have first have um, um, performed. A, What's it called? Um, you first have performed an, an object dispatch, um, and uh, which ensures that you are in the right code. Um, and in in case of XT, what prevents it is that you have no field words that uh, that allow you to store into them. So, uh, but it. Uh, Basically, an XT in SafeWorf is not just the bare um, uh, um, code address that you have in uh, in uh, normal forth, but you also have an object header which says which class it is of, and the class it is of has no uh, no fields. So it it only has the, the, it only supports execution. So that prevents the the writing into it through your array yes. notation. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, so we are back to Howard again. Yes, I've finally worked out how to raise my hand in the in this system. Um, yeah, just, uh, we were talking uh, earlier um, about the the C fetch um, eight bit, sixteen bit, little endian, big endian, the uh, sixty four options for doing this. Does that does this system set a forth of using objects? Does that allow you to fix that? Oh. Uh, because it's, it's essentially every every value that you're storing now is a it has its own type. Or could have oh, well, type. I mean, it would certainly uh, deal with. Uh, so um, what what I envision is uh, that you have typed fields, so. Uh, uh, you say that something is a W field, it would be 16 bits. Uh, no, it uh, would be a W value that, that would be uh, 16 bits and uh, an L value, it would be 32 bits um, uh, or a C field uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, then you, when you access it, it just um, uh, pushes it on uh, on the on the data stack or pops from the data stack. Well, just just like values do. So um, certainly the size uh, problems are, are dealt with in that way. Um, uh, and maybe yeah, signedness you can also deal with in that way. Um, um, byte order. Well, I mean, if you really uh, access wrongly ordered uh, fields uh, from within the safe language, 
you can also add words for that. But I expect that you would do that uh, using the escape hatch. Okay, thanks. Uh, just to say, I am very interested in this. I don't know why, but I look forward to talking about it some more. Yeah, maybe maybe adding to Howard on that occasion. I think when you present the uh, ideas, there's certainly interest in them, but we forces like to tinker with stuff before we make a commitment. And uh, I'm I'm a bit afraid of asking you to implement such a huge thing. What I'd I'd really love was the regional memory access, for example. Um, so I think if you if you could provide a small prototype and then we can test that we can certainly commit you to much more time <laughs> with, a good, with a good conscience that is i mean okay i actually uh, i actually expect that uh, um, uh, as long as i'm not going into multi-threading it's not that uh, um, much effort but it certainly will take a few weeks yes okay Ulrich. Uli, could you please yeah. Yeah, would would you think it it would be possible to uh, have this as some extension to GeForce, so some, some package that you load on top that seals uh, all the memory unsafe words, and uh, this is our escape hatch, and uh, uh, will then allow us to program in safe force. That's more or less the idea, except um, that um, you want to implement an object stack uh, as um, as a uh, not, yeah. not not in fourth, but uh, in uh, at the lower level. So, which would be in uh, C in G fourth, uh, mm -hmm. or in, in uh, with using assembly language in in other fourth systems, uh, because I mean I want it to be yeah. efficient. Uh, yeah, I want yeah. to do um, performance measurements. I mean, it would certainly be possible to do something for for experiments uh, in in fourth, but uh, I, I, for for performance, mm -hmm. I want I want it to be. Uh, I, I, I need I need more kind of kernel yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, but but to get the the uh, uh, the safe force flavor, uh, maybe a, a initial implementation of the object stack in force is is fine. Yeah, um, yeah, great. Well, Thank you very much. 